Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this organic text in Cinema 4D. I'm calling it organic because I don't know what else to call it right now. It might have a new name in the title. Um, obviously you guys will know because you'll be reading it. Uh, but this is basically what we're going to be creating, and it's really, really good looking in my opinion. Uh, it's something really different um, as far as text in Cinema 4D. Um, and you can incorporate a lot of uh, interesting colors together and different textures and materials. So it's pretty neat. I'm just going to be doing the Cinema 4D portion. If you guys want to download um, the files, I'll have a Cinema 4D and Photoshop one. Um, the Photoshop one will only be for those who are um, part of the Patreon page, um, but you guys will all be able to download the Cinema 4D file um, uh, down below. Anyways guys, let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to hide all the stuff here. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get some text. So let's go to MoGraph Mo Text, and we're just going to go to the Object tab. We'll set it to middle, and you can type whatever text you want. I'm just going to do this like breakdown with no vowels deal. And then let's do a depth of 60. Um, did not want to work. Depth of 60. And you can add caps if you want. You know, if you've watched my tutorials regular, regularly, I always use fillet caps, but for this I did not. And I have not tried it with with fillet caps, so for the tutorial I'm not going to do it. But you guys can experiment and do whatever you want. So breakdown, and then let's pick a font. I went with Arial, so let's get that real quick. Alright, and then let's find... You can use any font you want, obviously, but um, I'm going to go ahead and use Arial. I just went past it. Just saw it. Where is it? There it is scrolled way farther than I thought. Alright, so we're going to do Arial. I don't want narrow. What the heck? Oh. There we go. Arial, and we'll go Arial Black, because why not? Now we could do Bold. We'll do Arial Bold. And uh, there's our text. Now let's go and spice it up a bit so we could keep it straight on but with like an organic look I feel like the text has to be tilted and just different like if you have standard straight across text for um, an organic look it's, it's just going to be missing out on something in my opinion. And I've tried it both ways and you definitely want to do something to the text to make it interesting. And there's two ways you can do this. You could hit C on the keyboard right now make this edit editable. editable? and then just tilt each letter individually, but I like to go to MoGraph Effector Random, and make sure you have the MoTeX selected when you do that. And I'm gonna come down here to Position, and make all these five, and then go to Rotation, and go slightly negative, slightly negative, and then a little bit positive. And if you've watched my tutorials pretty regularly, you'd have seen that as well. And then now, like, we can get into actually doing the effect. So the thing you need to download for this is a plugin called Procedural. Um, now it's spelled out like Proc3 Dural, um, or Dural, I guess. And you want to go ahead and download that and add it to your plugins folder in your Maxon folder, um, which will be somewhere on your uh, Mac or PC. Uh, I think if you have a Mac, it's in your applications, and it's just under a folder called Maxon. Um, PC, you could really put it anywhere, but find that, add it to your plugins, or download that, add it to your plugins, and then you want to go to Plugins, Procedural, and you'll see this kind of square pop up. Now, if I just get rid of that, and let's hop out the camera, and let me hide the text for a sec, you can see this is what we have. It's a cube, but it's all deformed and organic, and that's what we're going to be using. Uh, you can just use the procedural and use it for different shapes and do whatever, which we'll kind of do later. But I want to do it with text because that's like way cooler in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me hop back into the camera, 
and let's make our text visible again. And what we want to do is hide the text um, and instead of just hitting the check mark, we want to double click and double click on the stoplight things so they're both red. So now it's not visible. And then on the procedural, you want to go to object source, click the arrow and click the text or you can just drag the text down to the source. And you'll notice it'll line up with this and go to the left. So you just want to move that over and align it again. And now we want to play with the settings because obviously you can't read this right now. So a few things uh, I would suggest doing. Um, first thing is down here for like the sampling in view and render. I'd suggest making these the same at all time. Unless you have a really bad and slow computer then you might want to have the view lower than the render. Um, but if you just set this to 200, I feel like that's a good enough mark and will work uh, for whatever you're doing. Uh, and then we can start playing with some settings. So first things first, down here at the noise, this is what's going to change how the text breaks down. So if we come here, click on that, you can see there's a tab here called noise. If we click that, we have a bunch of options. And actually on the site where you download this... Um, this plugin right here. If you click on this thumbnail image and zoom in here, let me just expand it a little wider. You can see all of these are the different um, sh the different noises that will create different effects. So you can see this one's more cellular and square. Um, this one like really deteriorates it. This is more organic and rounded. Um, and then these are just kind of like natural breakdowns. This is again a little square. And you just have a bunch of different options here that you can pick from and just use and see how they look. So if I hide that, the ones that I used, I have written down somewhere. So I used the normal noise at one point, but I also use FBM, which is the one I'll use now, and then Blistered Turbulence. So those three are the ones I'll be using. Let's go ahead and click FBM and you can see there's been a, a slight change to how the, the text looks. And click on the procedural again and let's go and mess around with some more settings. So we have fall off here and the higher you go with that, just the um, more segments you'll get and the more rounded or more organic it will look. So the higher you go, the better. And then you'll notice if you go all the way to zero, it is like the minimum so it's basically like a voxel effect just all squares um which you also might use at some point i mean you could do like a lego effect i guess maybe um anyway i'm just gonna leave that at 50 actually may, might go a little positive since it seems to be running okay if i go a little higher so we'll do that the other thing you can come and do is change the scale so if i change the scale down to 50 you can see it gives me something else, like it changes where um, the effect is taking place. And you can mess with that. You can also mess with the offset, which also does a similar thing and just kind of changes where it, uh, the effect is taking place. And I'm just going to put these back at zero. Um, you also have an output here. I haven't messed with this, but uh, things like thinking particles might be cool to use. Um, but I haven't gotten... Um, to the point where I want to use that because I don't think it would fit into this tutorial. Um, but anyway, there's just a lot of various things you can play around with here in the settings. Oh, iterations as well down here underneath fall off. If you bump that up, you can see a slight change. If you bump that down, let's go back to 10. You can see it, it grows a little more. Uh, now I'm going to set the scale back to a hundred because we get a little bit more. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add some materials. So the materials I'm going to be using are from my Material V6 pack, which is in my store if you want to check it out. Or you can just use any gray and any colored materials. Um, really doesn't matter. Also, by the way, I have a link to my Lightroom down below, which is what I'm using here. Um, if you need free Lightroom or free materials, I just released my 25,000 subscribers pack. Thank you, by the way. And it has some good resources there if you just want some free stuff. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and add the gray material to this one. And then let's just duplicate that procedural. And let's mess with some settings. So actually, let's change the color first so we can see it. 
So just drag a colored material onto that duplicated one and we'll change the noise type. So instead of FBM, we can go blistered turbulence. And you can see the slight difference here. Um, let me click on that and let's change the scale to 80 all the way across the board. And now you can see it moves to a different position and now it's kind of making our text even more readable. You can kind of see more of the letters a little easier. And basically that's what I did for this. I just changed the settings to get uh, the organic effects in different places. So you can make the text readable, but it still has an effect everywhere and just looks really neat. Also, these are currently on the same Z axis. So what I mean by that is if I hop out here, they are all aligned from this view. And I kind of don't want that. I want them to be a little staggered. So I kept the gray in front and then I'm going to move the red back just a bit. So the gray is a little more ahead. And if, let me show you a quick render of what that looks like. You can see you can barely tell that one's ahead of the other, but it just makes it look a little more distinct um, in the effect and things aren't mixing together as much. And uh, you'll have to do this for as many as you create. So the next one, we'll go ahead and do another color. So let me copy and paste that one. And we'll put orange in here. And we'll make the orange have a scale of 100 as well. And we'll change it. Instead of blister turbulence, we'll go ahead and use the normal noise. If I can find it, there it is. So normal noise, let's hop out the camera and bring that one back a little further. There we go, you can see our text is keep coming together even more. And we just have one final step. Uh, we'll just add another color. You could do this as many times as you want. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll bump this one down to 60 on the scale to take some more places. As you can see, yeah, it fills in even more areas. And we can use a different noise. Um, let's just go back to blister turbulence maybe. That works. And then finally move it back a little bit. So there we go, there's our text. Let's render it out and see what we have. I think this might have looked a little better with the Arial Black instead of the Arial Bold. Um, so the font would have been a little thicker. This looks just a little too thin for me. Um, but obviously you guys can do whatever you want to get uh, any result you'd like. Uh, the only problem I see with this one would probably be the amount of gray on the R and probably the amount of gray on the B. So I'd probably play with the settings a little more and try to get that to look a little better. But now I wanted to add some particles for what I was working on. Uh, I wanted more spread around. So uh, once you finish your text too, um, you, I would suggest selecting all the procedurals, putting them into a null, just so you have them, duplicating them. So Command C, Command V. Take that null and just do the stoplight, both red, uh, put it down at the bottom. So if you want to change something, you can, but then go into the one that's still visible and make it all editable or make it all into an object uh, by pressing C. And that way these are just solid objects now and you can move them a lot easier without uh, your computer taking a little while and making the plugin have to do all the calculations and whatnot. And that's just like a lot easier. All right, so we have our text, but maybe we want some more particles to maybe bring into Photoshop to uh, add particles around different bits, which is something I th thought of doing. Um, so if you wanted like a bunch of particles and you could also just use it for having a bunch of particles, but um, let's go to the plugin and grab the procedural again. Uh, this time, bring it down to like the lower left somewhere here. And I'd probably suggest doing this on a separate render. So rendering out the text and then hiding the text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide the text and we'll just be doing the particles. I'm gonna make this about 1400 um, wide, 800 tall, um, making this 200 again, the sampling view. And then instead of scale of 100, let's bump it up above 100 and go 150. Um, this might take a little bit to calculate A little bit of loading time here. All 
Alright, and you can see making that 150 made the organic bits smaller. Um, so it's like, it's just scaled in a little bit. Um, or it's rather scaled up, but yeah, you get what I mean. Um, anyway, we have the beach ball again, and we're going to just change the noise to um, one of the other ones. So the normal noise, this is a little too much still. We want one that like breaks down the, uh, the cube a little more. So if I do cranal, um, you'll see that this will just give us a bunch of various particles like so. And if we hop in here too, these might be a little too good still. Um, if I bump down the sampling view to 100, that's a little more particle-y. And then we just have to match that with the render. And you could increase the fall off so they're a little smoother. And then you have a bunch of particles. And just add your color. And you can do this with um, different scales with all the different colors, render that out, and you have a bunch of particles. Anyways, guys, that's a tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a pretty cool effect. If you did like it, be sure to check out the creators and maybe throw them a couple uh, dollar bills or donate to them or something, because uh, it's a really neat effect, a really neat plugin, and some of the stuff you can create with it is just absolutely amazing. They also have a second uh, version of this, which is like 35 bucks if you're interested in that. Um, again, links down below. But if you did enjoy, please leave a like, share it with your friends on Twitter or something. Uh, subscribe for more tutorials. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Uh, be sure to support the Patreon page if you want to get videos early, all the downloads to all the videos, all the downloads to stuff I'm working on personally. Uh, it all goes there. You can download it um, for $5, $10, $15. Those are the different levels. Um, but yeah, check that out. Help support me. My channel is not monetized. So. It helps me out. Anyways, see you guys in the next one. Peace.